I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. As we come to this message tonight, we're speaking on vessels of honor in God's hands. Our reading from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. For in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and made for, for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts and follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. As you look at the message we have tonight, it talks about vessels. All of us have vessels in our homes. We have vessels that we use for things that are precious, that are wonderful, that are useful and profitable. We also have vessels that we use for things that are dirty. Those being, that's a vessel. And other things, we put refuse and we put human waste. That's also a vessel. It says, some of the vessels are unto honor and some of the vessels are unto dishonor. In verse 20, he tells us, but in a great house, he's speaking here figuratively. He's talking about the church, the local church, the headquarters church, the district church, the church in the state, the church in the nation. It's a great house. He says in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, it says, but there are also vessels of wood and of earth, of clay, and some to honor. Some of the vessels are very good and precious, and they are unto honor. It says, some to dishonor. That is, those ones are not very good. You cannot present them to serve your neighbor or to serve the family or to serve anyone. But it's calling upon us that will be vessels unto honor, that will be suitable and meet for the master's use. You see, it's talking about us. It's talking about you, talking about me. It's talking about members of the body of Christ, members of the church. And it refers to us as vessels. That's why he tells us in verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Talking about a human being, a believer, a child of God, the one who purges himself, who purifies himself, and thereby becomes a vessel unto honor. And talks about his being sanctified, and his meat or suitable of feet, for the master's use 
and is prepared unto every good work. Then he tells us what to flee from, what to escape, and what to run away from if we're going to be vessels unto honor. It says, flee also youthful lusts, the things that defile, the things that debase, the things that destroy. Flee also useful laws. If you're going to be a vessel unto honor, you have a responsibility and you have a duty and you have something to do. The decision is in your hand. The decision is in my hand. He wants to use you. He wants to use me. But it's only going to use vessels unto honor. And if you're going to be a vessel unto honor, here is it. Flee also, youthful laws, but follow righteousness. Vessels of honor, faith. That's vessel unto honor, charity, love, vessel unto honor, and peace, vessel unto honor, with them other vessels that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, out of a purified heart. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Here we're reading from verse 3. It's reminding us again that we are vessels in the sight of the Lord. But what kind of vessel should we be if we're going to serve the Lord? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. For this is the will of God. Even your sanctification. For this is the will of God, even your spiritual circumcision. For this is the will of God, even your spiritual cleansing. For this is the will of God, even your inner holiness. For this is the will of God, even your heart holiness, sanctification. That ye should abstain from fornication. That is, you abstain from every appearance of fornication. It says in verse 4 that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel, his body in sanctification and honor. Once again, we're convinced that the vessel is not a kind of utensil at home. It's a human being. Is the one that is saved and the one that is sanctified and the one that is prepared for every good service. When God called Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul the Apostle, he referred to him as a vessel. And when God calls anyone today, he refers to that one as a vessel. And as God has called you, the Lord is referring to you as a vessel. You'll be a vessel unto honor if you're going to serve the Lord in the capacity he expects you to serve him. Acts chapter 9, reading from verse 15. Acts chapter 9, reading from verse 15. It says, For the Lord said unto him, unto Ananias, Go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me. He, the man. He, the convert. He, Saul, who has just been regenerated. He, Paul, that became the apostle. He is a chosen vessel unto me. To bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So then, as we're talking about vessels, we're talking about children of God. As we're talking about vessels, we're talking about the people that have come to know the Lord. And the grace of God is in their lives. And there's godliness in their lives. And there is glory that is going to be manifested through their lives. They are vessels unto honor in the hands of God. We're going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, purified vessels of honor in God's hands for service. Purified vessels of honor.
for service. He wants us to serve him. And he has peculiar service he wants you to carry out. And yet he's saying, you must be a purified vessel, a sanctified vessel, a porch vessel, a holy vessel, a cleansed vessel, a vessel that God himself has cleansed for the blood of the Lamb. Purified vessels of honor for service. Number two, polluted vessels of dishonor without salvation. Polluted vessels of dishonor. In the passage we read, it says in a great house, they are not only vessels unto honor, but they are vessels unto dishonor. They are not honorable. They are not glorious. They are not clean. They are not pure. They are not useful. They are not serviceable. They are not acceptable in the sight of the Lord. They are dirty. They are defiled. And because they are polluted, they bring dishonor. And the Lord cannot use them. Polluted vessels of dishonor without salvation. Point number three, preferred vessels for harvesting of souls. Preferred vessels for harvesting of souls. We come to number one, purified vessels of honor for service. Let's come back to this, Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. And we read again from verse 19. It says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. He's saying, in all seasons, in all generations, in all dispensations, and in every nation, in every country, God has the same foundation. He says, nevertheless, the foundation of God, from the time of old until this time, that foundation standeth sure. Traditions of men will not change that foundation. The ideas and the opinions of men will not change that foundation. The characteristics of men will not change that foundation. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. There may be few that are vessels unto honor. There may be many that are vessels unto honor. Whether few or many, God has a foundation. And God has a standard. And God has a principle. And he will not change. He will not bench. He will not modify his foundation. That foundation of God standeth sure. Until the end of the world. If we're going to see the glory of God. If we're going to see the power of God. That foundation that is, uh, is very sure, it's very certain, and it says it has a seal, it has a mark, it has a sign, it has a token. It says, The Lord knows them that are his, and it says, If you want to be known, to belong unto the Lord, if you want to be known and be counted as the people, part of the people that God will use, that God will find profitable in the kingdom let everyone that name it the name of christ depart from evil how do you name the name of christ you name the name of christ in prayer depart from evil you name the name of christ in testimony when you say i praise the lord the lord has saved me you name the name of christ in testimony then it says you are going to depart from evil and when you are witnessing to other people you are evangelizing other people. You mention the name of the Lord. And it says, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from evil. Everyone young. Everyone old. Everyone a man. Everyone a woman. Let everyone that wants to be a vessel unto honor, let him depart from evil. And then he tells us now, in verse 21, if a man therefore Purged himself from all these, that is, the things that will defile, and the things that will make you dirty in your heart, in your soul, 
in your mind the things that God himself is against. He says, if any man will purge himself, you see, the preacher will preach, the pastor will teach, and all the ministers will declare the truth of the word of God. Then it comes to you to say, I need to be purged, I need to be saved, or I need to be made holy, I need to flee that one. I need to get rid of that in my life. You are the one to make the purging. If any man therefore purge himself, if any woman therefore purge herself from all these, then it shall be a vessel unto honor. Purified vessels of honor for service. If a man purge himself, a woman purges, purge herself from all these, he shall be, she shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified. Yes, you are saved. Go ahead. Sanctified. Purified. Because God has said, be ye holy for I am holy. It's not just to accept in your mind. It's not just to accept in your head. It's not just to accept as a doctrine that there is holiness, but you move ahead you possess you move ahead and you experience and you say i want to be useful in the hands of the lord therefore i must be saved you're saved therefore i must be sanctified and you're sanctified the man that purges himself the woman that purges herself the boy the girl that purges himself herself the christian that purges himself sanctified and then it says suitable for the master's use what does that tell you if you are not sanctified if you are not holy whatever your talent whatever your training whatever your experience whatever you got from college whatever you got from any seminary that's not enough you have to put yourself you have to be sanctified. You have to be holy. And then it says, you'll be sanctified and you'll be fit for the master's use. You'll be prepared. You'll be ready unto every good work. And then it says, here is what you do. If you're wondering, how do I get myself ready? How do I get myself sanctified? How do I get myself suitable and fit for the master's use? Flee. Also, youthful laws. Or help me flee. You remember Joseph? That woman, Potiphar's wife, wanted to defile him. And the man did not say, Oh, she is my master's wife. And if she is saying this, she knows better. She must have a higher standard than I have. Who am I? I'm just a slave. But that man knew. Joseph knew. He had a dream. He was going to be useful in the hands of the Lord. He didn't know how. He didn't know when, he didn't know where, but he knew he had a dream. And that dream showed that he will be a man that others will paint to, that others will learn from. He will be a great vessel in the hand of the Lord, a vessel of honor in the hand of the Lord. Because of that, he fled. He didn't stay around. He didn't say, Master's wife, do you think this is right? Master's wife, don't you think that this may not be all right? No conversation. He fled. And that's what he's saying, that when you want to be used of God, you want to keep your soul. You want to keep that salvation. You want to keep that sanctification. And you want to be a vessel unto honor. It says you will flee useful laws, and then you will run after. You will follow after righteousness and faith and charity 